the card to the cloud. Okay, so um, so that's the first problem. That's the first step. The next step is to write the KCL. Okay, KCL at the node V1. So the first step is to just make the observation that the current flowing down in the eight ohm resistance is done. Now I write KCL at node. Let's see, at node V1. So I add up all the currents so that are leaving the node. So there is one current, there's another current, there's a third current, and there's a fourth current leaving the node. Okay, so let's start with this guy. That current is I test. Okay, but it is exactly opposite to the actual current that is flowing in. So I account for that using a negative value. Plus, let's look at the current flowing in uh, the bottom branch. I know that is IX, right? That's IX. Plus, the current flowing in the top branch is three times IX. Plus, the current flowing in this two ohm resistance, that guy is V1. minus zero over two ohms. All of that equals zero, okay? So here I get um, V test So in this, Ix equals to V test over eight, okay? Here um, I get, um, V test, if I factor out, if I plug that V test equals to V test over eight in place of IX over here, I can write it as, um, let's see, V test over eight, negative I test plus, oops, Wherever I see Ix, I'm going to plug in a value of V test over eight, okay? Okay, and V1 equals to V test, right? V1 equals to V test. So negative um, I test plus V test over eight plus three times V test over eight for that guy, plus V1 is V test, V test over two, okay? So I can simplify this to appear like V test over one plus times one over eight, three over eight plus one over two equals to I test, okay? Now I'm interested not in the absolute value of V test or in the absolute value of I test. I'm interested in V test over I test, okay? V test over I test, okay, is exactly, so I bring this guy to the denominator and take this guy to the other side of the equation is going to be one over eight plus three over eight plus one half all in the denominator. So it's going to give me a value of one ohm. So R Thevenin equals to V test over I test equals to one ohm. Does that make sense? Questions, please. The only observation I made was that uh, um, Ix is V test over eight, okay? And I plugged that 
into the second equation shown in red here. The rest is manipulating um, using um, using algebraic manipulation. Questions, please. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is to um, solve one more problem. Let's do one more problem. Okay, so um, R7 equals to one ohm was the answer that I that I got. Okay, this is eight volts. So we'll do one more problem and then we'll call it a day. Let's see if I can add a page here. Okay, let's see example in class. Example number three. Okay, so let's see if I can go here and maybe copy this guy. Okay, because this seems to have a um, test voltage test current method. We follow that, okay. okay? So we want to find the uh, Thevenin equivalent of this circuit. So the question is, find the Thevenin equivalent. So that means I have to find a voltage source and an equivalent resistance, the value of RTH, the value of VTH. I'm interested in finding that, okay? That's the question. So because there are dependent sources here, I have to apply a test voltage, test current method, okay? So the first thing is uh, let's find the, uh, Just give me a second. Um, we solved this problem in the class yesterday, right? We solved the problem of finding the Thevenin equivalent for this guy, resistance. Did we do the Thevenin's resistance for this guy? The exact same problem, right? Using the test voltage, test current method, I deactivate all the sources, okay? And find the value expression for I test and V test, and then eventually massage out an expression for V test over I test to arrive at a value of 100 ohms for this guy. Does that make sense? Do you remember that or do you want me to go over that again? Yeah, okay. I remember that. Okay, if that is the case, if you remember that, what I want you to do is to work on finding the V Thevenin. We open circuit Thevenin voltage. How do you find V7 in for this? So it seems in the class, we only did one half of the problem. The half that we did was to find the R7 in to be 100 ohms, okay? What is the value of V7 in here? Okay, let's see. Okay, so do you want to spend a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes working on that? 
Okay. All right, let's um, take a stab at this problem. Let me first make the observation that VAB that I see here, that's exactly the VTH that I'm interested in finding out because that's the open circuit voltage, okay? That's the open circuit voltage between these two terminals. So the observations that I first make is VAB which is shown here to be little v with this polarity is what I'm after is the VTH that I'm after. Okay, that's the observation one I make. Next, let's, let's set up the currents through um, each of these left and right parts of the uh, parts of the circuit. So in the left part of the circuit, okay, I can make the um, equation. How would I set up the equation here? For the current flowing through the resistance of two kilo ohms I, that is equals to five volts. That's the voltage here minus this voltage three times little v okay over 2000 because that's two kilo everybody with me so far yes yes then the next observation is that i x the current flowing in this branch is in this um path is zero, Ix is zero. Okay, there cannot be any current flowing because there is no written path for it. Okay, then we do the current equation at this node. Okay, we can look at the current at that node. Okay, when we look at the currents flowing out of that node, okay, this node is supposed to be at VTH or little v, okay? That's supposed to be at little v, right? Which is the same as VTH, okay? So KCL at node little v, okay? So the equation is going to be for the current that is flowing left, that is simply 20 times I. Plus, for the current that is flowing down, that is supposed to be little v over 25 ohms. All of that should equal zero. Okay, so I have my second equation here. Okay, or um, 5v, so the, I can massage this guy around. 5 volts minus 3 times little v equals to 2000 pi. Okay, or I can say um, 2000 i plus 3 times little v equals to 5. Okay, now um, let me see if I can, uh, this is 25, right? This is 25. Okay, now I can massage this equation number two to show like 500 times I plus little v equals to zero. I'm multiplying the numerator by and the denominator I'm by 25. Or both sides of the equation multiplied by 25, which implies that uh, um, I equals to, or uh, it simply means 
that V equals to negative 500 R. Okay, so this is um, the result that I get for V. So I'm going to plug Professor, this. I'm, yes. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I'm kind of confused. How did you get KCR node um, at the at the for number the second equation? I'm kind of confused how you got those uh, those answers. Oh, is yes. it twenty? Is it because you're starting to node there, and then basically because direction is towards the bottom, it makes it ne uh, positive. Yes. Okay. That's this guy. Okay. There's a second branch current, this guy flowing down, okay. which aligns with the direction I chose. That's this guy. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Other questions, please. Okay. So let me take this time to put all of this in black ink. That way it's not done. So I'm going to rearrange this to show the coloration. This guy is going to be for the green. Okay. So I'm going to plug this term negative 500 in place of B, negative 500i. So when I do that, so I'm just uh, algebraic manipulation of the equation here, nothing fancy. So all I'm doing is, I got an equation that says V can be replaced by negative 500. So I'm going to replace this V with negative 500 times i. So 2000i plus three times negative 500i equals to five. That's from this equation here, okay? Now we can get a value for i to be, or 500i is equals to five, or i equals to 0 0.01, okay? Once I have a value for i, Okay, once I have a value for I, I should be able to calculate a value for VTH. Because, um, let's see, once I have a value for I, using this, the exact same um, relationship, V equals to VTH equals to negative 500 times I. So that is negative 500 times 0 0.01. So it gives me a value of VTH equals to negative five volts. Does that make sense? Questions, please. So how do we know um, this answer is right or not? So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Um, so my argument is that the VTH is a negative five volts. Okay, that's at least the result that I arrived at and the Thevenin resistance is 100 ohms. So now, in order to verify the solution is correct, I'm going to ask you to do something. I leave it as an exercise for you, okay? So what you want to do is to, um, let's say, begin with the exact same problem. Well, you already have the RTH, right? So to verify your solution, Okay, what you want to do is, you already have RTH equals to 100 ohms. So now instead of finding VTH, you already have that to be negative five volts. What you want to do is to find I naught, which is simply short this circuit, 
okay? Apply KCL in order to find a value for, or an expression for IN, okay? Find a value for IN, okay? Then if your solution is correct, okay? If your solution is correct, RTH equals to 100 ohms. Earlier you had VTH equals to negative five volts. Okay, if your solution is correct, you would end up with a Norton equivalent circuit. Okay, with RTH equals to 100 ohms. Okay, and then I Norton. The value of I Norton should equal VTH over RTH. Okay, so if you find I Norton using this method and it equates and it equals the value of VTH over RTH, then you know you solve the problem using two different techniques and you arrived at the same answer because one is the source transformation of the other, right? So that's one way to verify your answer. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense for yes. Okay. Okay. So we are going to stop here and then we'll come back.